What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over the question original array from subsequence. Now the input is going to be a number, let's say uh, six in this case, which is the total number of unique characters, uh, unique numbers, and um, the uh, other part of the input is going to be a 2D grid of integers which represent subsequences of an array. Now, so there's an array that we're trying to find which is in this case going to be 0, 1, 5, 2, 3, 4. And um, we have to construct this array using the subsequences of that. So they give us the subsequences and we need to return the original. Now, let's go over the difference between a subsequence and a subarray first. <coughs> so a subarray is going to be like a consecutive slice of that array. And a subsequence is going to be um, not only the consecutive ones, but also it can skip and jump around. So that's a valid, uh, that's a subsequence and then this too would be a subsequence. So basically they're giving us this and then this subsequence and these are the inputs and they want us to return the original one. So immediately when we draw a diagram like this our intuition should tell us that hey this looks kind of like a, a, um, a, a graph, a directed graph. So let's see how we can approach this by modeling this problem as a graph. <clears throat> so say a valid subsequence is like 1, 2, 3. If this was 1, 2, and 3, then we know that 1 has an edge to 2 and 2 has an edge to 3 here, right? So we're going to be approaching this um, by first modeling this as a graph. Now, uh, the solution to this problem is essentially a topological sort. And for those that don't uh, know what the topological sort is, I'm going to cover that briefly. Now, there's a couple ways to do topological sort, like with a stack and a DFS approach, but I'll be going over Khan's uh, topological sort approach, which is based on BFS. And unlike a standard BFS, there's going to be no visited set. It's going to be using something called a in-degree array. And in-degree is this. If you have a node like this, and there's three arrows going into it or edges going into it, the in degree is 3. If there's a node with 1, then in degree is 1. If there's a simple node by itself, in degree is 0. So that's important. <coughs> Let's say we have a uh, graph like this. Now a topological sort means that it's an ordering of the nodes such that all the prerequisites are met. So for if we want to uh, visit node 3, we have to visit node fir 4 first, and we have to also visit node 2 first. If we have to visit node 2 first, we have to visit node 1 first. So a valid topological sort it would be 1, 4, uh, 2, and 3. It can also be 4, 1, 2, and 3 because both of these are valid and we can cover all of the nodes and satisfy their dependencies. So how do we do this? Uh, as I mentioned, it's a BFS approach, so we're going to make use of a queue. And the in degrees that I mentioned earlier, so the total number of edges going in here is 0, that's the in degree. Edges going in here is 1, edges going in here is 2, edges going in here is 0. So let's have a result could just be an array list, which is going to store our actual topological order. Now, <clears throat> in the beginning, what we do after we generated our map and the in degree counts is put in our queue everything which has a in degree of zero. So in this case, it's going to be one and four. Now, why do we do that? It's because uh, when we know that a node has no in degrees at this point in time, it has no dependencies, meaning other nodes don't have to be completed before. So to visit one, we don't have to visit anything before. So it can begin our topological sort. Same thing with four. 
Now what we do is a standard BFS where we pop it out of the queue and then we check, okay, does it have a in degree of zero? Yes, then put it in the result. Then when we're still at this current node, we look at its neighbors, each one of its neighbors, and decrease their in degree by one. So essentially we cut this uh, edge and we make it go to zero. Then while we're still here, we say, okay, the neighbor of, of this guy, of one, has an in degree of zero, so add it to the queue. <coughs> um, next, we're done with the one, so we go to four. One, we pop out four, and then we see it has an in degree of zero, so we add it to here. And then um, we uh, look at its neighbor, and we cut this one, so the in degree of this goes by one. 3 doesn't have a 0 in degree yet, so we don't add it to the queue. Next, we pop the 2 out, and we see that 2 has an in degree of 0, so we add it here. Then, we cut its, pa its uh, a neighbor's path, so this goes to 0. And now 3 has an in degree of 0, so it gets added to the queue. Now 3 is gets popped out again. Uh, 3 has no neighbors, so all we do is add it like that. And we'll see that this is a valid topological sort, 1, 4, 2, 3. Now that's essentially what we do to that big number over there. Um, <coughs> that big uh, uh, example over there. So let me draw that out briefly. And I won't go through the full iterations, but you'll see how we can. it's going to satisfy our model. So we have 1, 2, 3. Uh, we have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 3, uh, and 1 also goes to 2 again. Now 3 goes to 4, and uh, 0 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 4. Let's see if this valid output, if this output is going to actually work. So we're saying 0 and 1 get added first because they have in degrees of 0, right? So, uh, in degree of 0, 0, in degree of 2, in degree of 1, in degree of 2, and in degree of 1. Now, 0 and 0 are part of the result first. Next, we, we let's say we start with uh, the 0 node, right? We're going to cut this path, so this one goes to 0. Its in degree becomes Z uh, five's in degree becomes zero, so we're going at five. Next, we go um, to this one, and one is going to cut its both paths. So this goes to in degree goes to zero. So now two is added here. So let let me just color that. Now five is gonna um, cut its path. So this in degree goes to one. Now. 2 is going to cut its path. Oh, sorry. Cut, it's going to cut its path. This goes to 0. So 3 gets added here. Uh, 3 gets added here. And 3 is colored. Now 3 is going to cut its path. So this goes to 0. And we finally have 4. So yes, this one matches this exactly. And we see how the topological sort has satisfied our problem. Now let's get into the actual code. Let's say um, the input is given as a 2D integer array. So let's say they want a list of integers. And we call it um, array from sub. And the input is given as a 2D grid of, uh, let's call it sub. Sub for subsequences over there. So first we need to generate <coughs> we need to generate the the adjacency rep adjacency list representation of the map and then also the in degree. So the input, let's first create an in degree array. Of n. Uh, okay, that's actually something I should add here. Int n. And then we're going to generate for int i is equal to 0, i is less than sub dot length i plus plus 
uh, for int j is equal to zero, j is less than sub of i um, of length minus one, because we're taking two numbers at a time, minus one, because um, we need to take one and two at a time and two and three at a time. Um, okay, so that's that one. And uh, we can start initializing it now. Uh, let me also create the map map of integers list of integers. Call it ADJ is new hash map. Mm. It's going to be list of uh, integer call it l is uh, adj dot get or default um, is going to be sub of i of j or a new array list now we have that one um, what we have to do is add l dot add sub of i of j plus 1 uh, and that is going to put our uh, gonna create our edges and then we also in increment our in degree array of sub of i of j plus 1 this guy the in degree goes up by 1 um, we know that this is valid when we're saying 1 to 2, the in degree of 2 is incremented. And then we just put it back adjacency dot put sub of i of j l. So that generates our map correctly and our in degree correctly. So now we can go into the meat of the topological sort. Um, so in Khan's topological sort, we first initialize our Q with every node with the in degree of zero. So I less than n, I plus plus, if in degree of i is zero. And then what we do is we add it to the Q. Um, yeah, the Q going to be that one. Uh, yeah, let's just initialize a Q as well. Um, the Q, of course, has to be initialized before, so we we'll say Q U E U E integer Q is new linked list. So that one's generated correctly, and we put everything in our Q. Uh, now let's get into the actual BFS loop. while the queue is not empty. Uh, actually, let me make a result of that one first. So list of integer result is new array list. And while queue is not empty, what we can do is um, <coughs> uh, pull the current. So int current is q dot pull, and if the in degree is one, is one, then we can add it to result result dot add the current node. Um, then we can see, we do a little safety check here to say if the adjacency uh, list doesn't have that node. So if the adjacency list doesn't contain this key, then we just continue. But if it does, let's go through its neighbors. For int nei, meaning neighbors, adjacency dot get cur. When we when we get the curve, what we do is just simply decrement 
the neighbors in degree and if in degree of the neighbor is zero at this point then we just add it to the queue uh, neighbor yeah so that closes the for loop that closes the while loop now at this point our integer result should our, our result array list should be ready and that's pretty much how you solve this problem I just want to go over the runtime complexity So the runtime complexity is going to be O of, let's see. Well, first we generated the map by going through every single edge, right? So we have to E, and then we visited every single node to see whether or not it has an in degree of zero. So V is the total number of uh, nodes. So O of E plus V is going to be the runtime of this algorithm. So that's pretty much how you solve it. Thanks for watching.